We believe the internet is the most powerful tool for human progress the world has ever seen. Continuously created by all and governed by none. A global commons that ensures access for everyone. What it enables is nothing short of magic. We believe the internet must remain a space where ideas are born and perspectives are challenged. Where collaboration drives inspiration and debate fuels ingenuity. Where technology empowers creators to unleash innovation at a pace never before imagined. To reach beyond what is possible today. We believe technology that reimagines the way digital teams work sparks humanity's drive to achieve and advance. When we come together to make the internet, we are building the future turning inspiration into action, freeing us to create experiences that accelerate change and unlock extraordinary performance, kindling our passion to push limits, to explore, to discover, to disregard the status quo and embrace new possibilities in our relentless pursuit of better. Hello, DrupalCon. My name is Steve Persh from Pantheon. We're proud to again be sponsors here at DrupalCon. I feel privileged to be introducing today's keynote address related to our many core initiatives. Today we'll hear from initiative leads, each of whom is working on an area of critical importance that could influence Drupal far into the future. The one of my hopes for today's session is that it will answer for me and many others in the room a question related to the much more immediate future. What table am I going to sit at during the contribution time today? Uh, should I be working on single directory components? That sounds cool, but perhaps I should be smashing bugs or, or joining up with the project browser or no, the, the, the auto-update initiative might be the place to be, and, and, and to go off my script, I was just chatting with Dave Reed here about a joke module related to render caching. Maybe I, I got to go there, but, uh, you know, yes, exactly. Uh, applause, uh, applause for Dave Reed and joke modules. Let's bring back joke modules. But, uh, but, but getting back, getting back on, on my script, I, I'm concerned that this session will actually make the, the, the question harder. I mean, these topics are very compelling. Our initiative leads are incredibly impressive folks. Uh, I've known many of them for years. Refreshing myself, looking at their Drupal.org profiles, I counted up that collectively they have 106 years of Drupal experience. Collectively, they have 4,000 876 credits in the Drupal.org tracker, and perhaps most impressively, 182 other Drupalers credit them as mentors. As much as we, I think, nobly try to quantify the often coded contributions to the Drupal community, it's often the community work, the community building work that our initiative leads and so many others in this room excel at uh, that, that are unquantifiable and, and often most valuable. And it's that community building work that, that honestly makes me not that nervous about which table to, to sit at because our initiative leads have an incredible capacity to make their tables feel welcoming. And even though those tables may have only eight or ten chairs around them, our initiative leads somehow make those tables feel bigger. So let's welcome to the stage Matteo Bosch, Leslie Glynn, Tim Lennon, Amber Matz, Christina Chimias, Ted Bowman, and Gabor Hochi. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Initiative Leads keynote. Thanks for coming. Um, so I'm Gabor Hoichi, and I organize these Initiative Leads keynotes. And it's great to be here for the first time in the US with this format. Um, yeah, thank you. It's a proven format that we are doing in Europe. And uh, I think some of you are here to learn about the progress that we are making. And we are making great progress in many of these areas. But I think Steve already 
blew my cover that why we are actually here is to show ourselves, is to show that we are friendly people and we would like to work with you on all of these things. So the only way that we'll make all of these visions happen that we are presenting today is if you join us and you work with us today, tomorrow, and then afterwards um, online as well. So that's why we are here. But we are also here to so show you some cool stuff that we are working on, and there's a lot of things to be excited about today. So let's start with Ted Bowman from Acquia. Uh, hi, I'm Ted Bowman, a software engineer with Drupal, uh, Acquia's Drupal Acceleration team, and I'm here to talk about automatic updates. We're ready for users and testing today. And I also put a glaring typo, on, definitely on purpose, in our slides, just to make sure you're still awake and you're watching my slides um, very closely. All right, so our initiative goals are we want to in, uh, ensure security updates are uh, applied quickly and securely and with minimal effort by site administrators. We want to reduce maintenance costs because we know ongoing Drupal updates are a big part of uh, maintenance costs for Drupal sites and we want to reduce composer pain points. We just released a 3.0.0 alpha one version of our module. This has Uh, this has an updater form, but also we added a new feature, unattended updates for core patches. Basically, security and bug fixes will happen in the background, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, that is definitely one of the things we want to test today in an ongoing manner. And hold for slide. <laughs> um, so we also have an experimental module that supports contrib updates. We know contrib updates uh, take a lot of time. So, but right now, unattended contrib updates we don't support because it's, there's various backwards compatibility issues. So now we also have a drush update command, and basically this allows you to do unattended updates even if your site is right protected from the web server. So this is the preferred way to do it. It's the most secure way. And also there's a simple task you need to do on your server to set this up, but we can show you how to do it. So today we need alpha testers. Um, uh, basically, you know, really we can write all the automated tests we want, but we really need people to test this on different configurations, so we'll help you with that today. And that would be a really big help for us at the initiative. So what we're looking for in testers is... Okay, so we need, we'd love to find people who are ready to test this on live sites, basically to install the module and let it perform updates for, of Drupal core automatically in the background for you. Um, but we also have to be realistic that this is still an alpha module, so you have to be ready maybe if there are hiccups, we're doing everything possible that there won't be. Um, but you must have backups on an ongoing basis, so in general you just should have backups, but you know, we're gonna do updates while you're sleeping, so you wanna make sure that you have backups. Uh, we have, um, the requirements you need is you need to be able to have your code base writable or run Drush on the server, run Composer, rsync, um, the module will tell you if you don't meet any of these problems and we have help pages that will help you set it up. Um, so what can we do for you as part of the initiative is we can help you determine if your site is ready for automatic updates, if your hosting is compatible, and today we can help you set up the site, um, set it up on your site, on your hosting, either locally or hopefully on live hosting. Um, what we can't do for you is we can't make a magic backup for you after something goes wrong. So you really need to have backups on a regular basis or before you do an update if you're doing it manually. Um, hopefully nothing will go wrong, glaring typo. Um, but remember this is still an alpha module so you never know. So um, We also want to test the, we have an upcoming feature of experimental cron updates. So. Uh, updates of contrib in the background when nobody's looking is a bit risky um, because there's backwards compatibility issues, but we're working on that, and if you get set up today with the module, when we introduce that feature, you'll be ready to use it. Um, so we're looking for alpha testers of that, and we have an issue on Drupal.org where you can come and say, I want to sign up, and it lays out the support that we will give you. We're looking for you know a few testers of that that we will strongly support. Uh, so we can look for the future of what we want ultimately in Drupal core, not MVP, but test that functionality now so we basically know what people, what users want and how they want it to work. 
Um, so it's, testing is really important because each Drupal update is different. Each project has different composer um, configuration and dependencies. And we have many different hosting configurations. So all of this is really impossible to test with, automatic, with automated tests, even though we do as much as we can. Um, if you're not ready for live up automatic updates on your site, we have other options for you that you can do today and on an ongoing basis to basically take advantage of automatic updates and to help out the initiative. So one thing you can do is uh, test locally today, and we're going to make it easy. We have, uh, as part of the first time mentored uh, con contribution, We've provided in detailed instructions for how to basically set this up locally, either on an existing site or a new site, and how to run through the testing. And then we have a detailed sort of report form that you can click and say, OK, this is what happened, or this was, it was great, or something went wrong. Also, you can use the update form on your local or live sites. If you're not ready for updates to happen in the background, we have a form to go from uh, patch releases or minor releases. So using this is really helpful for us, even if you don't want to do it in the background. Hopefully, it's helpful to you to sort of avoid dealing with Composer directly. Uh, you can look through our issue queue. We have issues. Um, we'll have the novice issue for testing it, and we have other issues for helping out. And often in a day like today, we have, where we have a lot of testers, we find a lot of stuff that we just missed. Hopefully small stuff, maybe big stuff. But today, hopefully, we'll generate even more issues if you want to become part of the initiative, which you can do by going to pound auto updates in Drupal Slack. And we have meetings every other Tuesday at 1 PM Pittsburgh time, 1700 UTC. And our next meeting is next Tuesday. You can look through the issue queue. You can come by and meet us today, ask how you can get involved, tell us how you want to get involved. And everybody is welcome to join. So thanks. Thank you. Uh, it's been great seeing automatic updates uh, grow into this position where they can do so many things. It's been a collaboration with the Drupal Association and a lot of people in the community to get here. And there's more to do, so join today and make it happen. Uh, next up is uh, Christina, and she will talk about usability improvements. Okay, so I'm Cristina Chumillas. I'm gonna. I'm from Lullabot, senior front-end developer. I'm not going to talk about an initiative per se. I'm going to talk about several usability improvements um, that we are going to have, and hopefully we are going to work in the next months. Um, several people. It's just not me. And actually, what we want to do is change this. Probably you all know this, you've all seen this, but it's not just a joke. It's actually how Drupal is perceived outside our island. So um, we want to change that, and we want to make Drupal more use, usable, more easy for people that is starting, and we want to make it easier for content users. But how are we going to get to the content users if we are targeting the ambitious site builders? And we have a few ideas, and ideally the way to do that would be to make the default better, because how many of you have actually had a sprint to actually improve the administration interface for the content users? So almost nobody. So if we can actually make the default better, it might, we might be able to reach these final content users and make Drupal easier to use for um, actually everybody that is going to use Drupal. And how do we actually decide what's the best thing to do, work on? And uh, the thing is that we need to define the, these um, user journeys, where people start the journey, what they want to achieve, what's the goal, and especially what are the steps on the way, and what are the most frustrating steps for each of the users, because there are a lot of them, believe me. Um, the thing is that, um, we have several users. We just don't have uh, content users like authors, editors. We also have site builders, site administrators, and for each of them, the user journey is completely different. And we've been thinking about that for a lot of time. Um, we have a lot of ideas. We started thinking about that when we started the admin UI initiative like years ago. And uh, one of the first things that we thought is that we wanted to 
reorder things on the admin UI, reorder regions. And we have a winner, and actually we have the first piece of the Tetris that we, can, we want to move, and that's the toolbar. We want to redesign the toolbar. Um, actually, the first thing is moving it to the left, but there is a reason behind that. There is a lot of research behind that, uh, because that's a perfect place to put like a really complex menu over there. It's been tested um, across uh, a lot of, uh, it's a common pattern, and also Jean has done, has done that. Sasha, that was on, the, on these initial conversations, was actually implementing a lot of these ideas in Jean. And we have all the insights of people, what they like, what, did, what they didn't like. So that's something, some insights that we already have. And with that, we also want to change the, hopefully change the information architecture, not just the look and feel, but also which things and how are they ordered, if they actually make sense for the users. We're preparing a card sorting, and hopefully this will impact not only site builders, but also content authors, because are we sure that we want exactly the same menu for everybody? We, see, if we have the, mo the toolbar on the left, we will be able to have other regions, like for example, a sticky bar at the top that will leave um, space, and, space and options to do uh, crazy things with the sidebar, for example, collapse the sidebar if you do, we don't want it, or have other regions. What if we have the sticky bar at the top, we can have the save button in there, but also other actions, like for example, let's say we want an autosave, and we are going to say your form has been saved like six seconds ago, or everything has been saved. This gives us a space to actually change and the patterns change new things, add new patterns in there, like for example, new navigation patterns in several in other places, or for example, a region for a region for notifications. What about the safe? Yes, your form has been saved. Okay, just go away. I don't want this message anymore in there. So we have the option to change a lot of things. And these layout changes hopefully are going to be the base for all these other changes that are going to come and uh, will serve uh, on the designs and also on all this research for uh, a lot of other things. Like, for example, the starting point for these users that we were seeing. And uh, no, it's 2023. We're talking about a dashboard, but we really need a dashboard. Um, Right now, we are landing on a user page where it says how much time you've been a user on that site. Super useful. So um, we really want to change that. And the thing is that we can't have the same dashboard for everybody. And that's why it failed in the past. So we need to put several different content per user. And we have the content editor right now as a role in Drupal. So this is a really good starting point. So. As I'm saying, there are several initiatives or initiatives or things happening actually. And it's not just about the dashboard, it's also about, for example, the field UI. The Drupal acceleration team at Aki are working on that and they are doing an amazing job and they are testing what they are doing. So um, they are changing really, really, really a lot of things and it really promises, uh, it really promises, it's really good. And um, it's not just about Lullabot and Akia. On X Internet, we're meeting weekly uh, to work on several things on the admin interface. So if any of you want to get be part of that, please join us. Let us know, because we are starting right now. We can plan together and decide what we change in the future. And uh, it depends on us. So today, we're hopefully going to test several things, this toolbar, prototypes. Um, the new navigation patterns also, and also this card sorting that I was saying, we have the test ready. So, uh, okay, time's up. Um, please uh, come to the contribution day and uh, come to the uh, admin UI Slack channel because um, this is when, where we are actually going to organize ourselves. So thank you. Thank you. Um, so you may have noticed at the start that we said Amber is going to be here with us today. She's not on stage. She couldn't make it to this conference, but she is with us remotely. 
and she's going to present us the Bucks Mission and Needs Review Initiatives. And there are people here in person that you can work with today in the Mentored Contribution Room on Bucks Mission, the Needs Review Initiative. So you'll be able to be involved today. But let's hear about those from Amber. Thank you for setting aside time today to contribute to Drupal Core. Not only does the Drupal community rally behind large project initiatives, but there are two initiatives I'll tell you about that focus on the issue queue itself, work that is essential to the overall health of the Drupal project and community. The Bug Smash initiative focuses on cleaning up the core issue queue with the goal of reducing the number of open bug reports. We triage issues twice a day in the Bug Smash channel and hold Slack meetings twice a month that alternate between tracking our progress and group triage on a chosen subsystem. The Needs Review queue initiative focuses on issues with a needs review status. Our goal is to ensure these issues are reviewed in a timely fashion and move toward resolution. We want to provide higher quality reviews and ensure that issues don't languish with a needs review status. You can learn more about Bug Smash or Needs Review Queue initiatives by reading the pinned items in their channels. Right now, I want to tell you about an essential skill for either one and one that you can begin to learn today. How to triage a Drupal core issue. But why triage core issues? Issue triage is the regular gardening of a software project. With a small number of maintainers and a large number of open bugs, it's crucial that issues are prioritized, scoped, summarized, tested, and categorized in a way that is helpful to anyone else that looks at the issue. Step one of issue triage is to find an issue. The Bug Smash Initiative Guide on Drupal.org has a page called Working on the Initiative. Under what bugs we're looking at, check out the sections that start with needing triage. You'll find a bunch of great links to the issue queue with search filters already applied. To find an issue to triage or test for the needs review queue initiative, go to our channel to find review targets or filter the core issue queue by the status needs review. You can also filter by the tag needs review queue initiative. Another way to find a triage target is to choose an issue that you created in the past. Enter your Drupal.org username into the Submitted By field and choose one of your bug reports. Don't worry about issues that may have gone stale. This is your chance to ensure that your old bug report is still legit and ready to be worked on. Next, try to understand the issue. Read the issue summary carefully. Scan the comments to see if anyone has validated the problem recently. Look at who filed the report. Is it a core committer? You may want to find another issue. Do you think the issue is truly a bug report or is it something else? If you think the issue is not really a bug report, consult the Drupal.org documentation guide, Drupal Project Issues. Inside, there is a guide called Fields and Other Parts of an Issue, which has a page called Issue Category Field. Make sure you understand the issue categories before you update an issues category field. Now, try to find a duplicate issue. Follow the contributor guide page, identify duplicate issues, and search for a duplicate. And if you find one, follow the steps to determine which one should stay open and which one should be closed, and how to do that. The one that stays open will probably have more recent activity. Next, try to reproduce the bug. Follow the steps to reproduce in the issue summary on the latest version of Drupal. If the steps to reproduce are unclear, set the issue status to postponed, maintainer needs more info. Add the tag needs steps to reproduce and a comment explaining your actions. If you can't re reproduce the bug on the latest version of Drupal, this most likely means there's a duplicate issue with a fix that's been committed. Validate the issue using simplytest.me on the version against which it was opened and use git bisect, git log hyphen s, or an issue queue search to find the issue that fixed the issue. Maybe you were able to reproduce the bug, but you think that the bug exists in a contributed module, not Drupal core. A clue being that the steps to reproduce require you to install a contributed module. It's possible the issue could be closed in the core queue and copied over to the other projects queue. 
If after all this, you verified the issue by reproducing the bug, leave a comment and add any additional information you think might be useful, like what steps you took to verify the issue and on which version. It might also be appropriate and helpful to update the issue summary to clarify the problem or steps to reproduce. Before you submit your comment, check through the other fields. If it's been assigned but that happened a long time ago, change the assignment to unassigned. Only add tags that you're sure are appropriate as many have special meaning. Check with the issue tags, special tags documentation, or a mentor if you don't know. The Bug Smash Initiative has a documentation guide with a page on issue triage and comment templates. This page can help you craft your comment and help you think through your response. It's also a great idea to check out the Issue Etiquette Docs page before leaving a comment. If you're updating an issue as part of contribution with Bug Smash or Needs Review Queue initiatives, please add the appropriate tag. The tags we use are Bug Smash Initiative and Needs Review Queue Initiative. You can also search for issues with these tags in the core issue queue. In person, we have Stephen Mustgrave and Kristen Pohl in the Mentored Contribution Room. We also have folks in Slack who are here online to help you get started. Thank you, and I hope to see you in the Bug Smash and Needs Review Queue Initiative Slack channels. Thank you, Amber. So if this was a bit too much at first, uh, we have um, dedicated programs for you today to get hands-on mentoring in all, all, all of this process. So you'll get a lot of help in going through the process today. Uh, thank you. So next up is Tim Lennon, and he will talk to us about GitLab acceleration. Hey, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us a little bit earlier than the other keynotes. We appreciate having you here. Uh, I'm Tim Lennon. I'm the CTO of the Drupal Association. We're the nonprofit that supports the Drupal project, puts on DrupalCon, and hosts Drupal.org. And the GitLab Acceleration Project is our project to enhance the tools the community uses to contribute to Drupal. So um, as we relate to these other initiatives, our goal is to make these initiatives easier, to make these initiatives go faster, and to make the work that you do on your contributed projects go faster. There are three major milestones I'm going to talk about today. GitLab CI for automated testing for your projects, how we're preserving the contribution credit system that makes uh, Drupal.org unique and the Drupal project unique in open, uh, in open source, and issue migration and fork management. So the big news is that GitLab CI is available today for every contributed module on Drupal.org. So you can migrate now to use GitLab CI and will be in the contribution space helping people get migrated over. And once you've done it for your own project, please feel free to reach out to someone else who's working on it and show them the ropes and get it done. The main requirements for GitLab CI is we needed to be feature complete with Drupal CI, the automated testing that we've been using for years now. Um, and that means that it needs to work with both core and contrib on modern Drupal, but it's also going to need to work uh, in legacy Drupal as well. Um, now, right now, it is working for contrib and for modern Drupal versions. Today, we're going to be continuing to work in the contrib space on core and on legacy version 7. So how are you going to get started? If you're a maintainer of a project, uh, go to your primary project page, scroll down in the sidebar there, and find the source code link for your project. Once you click through to the source code, you're going to see a little add file icon at the top of the repository list. And you're going to click on that icon where you could sort of generically add files to your project. But you'll see, particularly in the interface, uh, the option to add by a specific file name. So we'll get over here to this next slide. Um, the file, the file name that you need to use is .gitlab-ci.yaml. And then a drop-down menu will appear automatically with predefined templates. The template at the top was developed by us at the Drupal Association and some dedicated volunteers in the Drupal community who helped us test this out. And this template is a really cool feature. If you are not an expert in CI, this template uses include files to automatically configure the CI process to let you save it, commit it to your project, and be testing already. 
the association and community volunteers are updating the include files to automatically keep track of the current supported versions of Drupal, of the PHP versions that are part of the minimum requirements, SQL versions. So those will be updated for you without you having to take extra action. But you can override them if you are a power user. So to do this, try it out. Um, today in the contrib room, make that GitLab CI YAML file, commit it to your project, report any issues you find to the drupal.org slash project slash GitLab underscore templates um, if we can make any improvements, um, and we'd love to see you during the contrib day. So I want to talk about contribution credit as well. Like I said, it's one of the unique parts of the Drupal ecosystem is we credit individuals and organizations for their work on the project, and we have a better understanding than almost any open source project of where the innovation in the project comes from. So we don't want to lose that just because we're going to a new tool set. If you're not familiar, what it looks like today is at the bottom or really at the comment field of any Drupal.org issue, there's this little form that says, hey, I'm doing this as a volunteer, or I'm doing this on behalf of my employer, or on behalf of a client. And you can mix and match these things if you did some of it weekends and evenings, some of it at your day job, and some of it for a client. So we're reproducing that form and the tools for uh, maintainers on Drupal 10 using the GitLab API to pull in all the information about your contribution. So this will get a record of your comments, even your emoji reactions that you might use, all the relevant information, um, the employer, the clients, the same things that you're used to, so that the maintainer, again, can see a form credit anyone who participated in the issue and moved it forward, and even credit people who were maybe present in person but didn't post to an issue um, if they need to do that as well. And this is going to let us continue to move forward uh, with an ecosystem that's focused on recognizing the people who've contributed to these solutions. Um, how are we doing this? Uh, we've written a Drupal bot uh, that integrates with GitLab using its uh, APIs. So when we move forward to GitLab issues and migrating everything from Drupal.org issues to GitLab issues, the Drupal bot will post at the beginning of every issue a couple of links, one for the attribution of credit and one for issue, for issue management and fork management, which is what I'll talk about next. This is going to be the last step in our completing our migration to GitLab, where you'll do your full contribution experience within the GitLab UI. And all the dominoes are slowly falling to get us to this point. Um, so what we're going to need to do is do migration of all existing issues. And oh, looks like we might have a duplicate slide in here. But the, um, on the next slide, what you'll see is just an example of a regular Drupal.org issue. So we've written a scripted process with the help of the uh, Drupal Spoons initiative, which was an early adopter of using GitLab uh, to contribute to Drupal. And you'll see here, this is just an example of a kind of random issue, and there's a little citation of the original Drupal.org issue it came from. It also pulls in the related contribution branches that were in progress. Similarly, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. We've got doubled, doubled slides here. But similarly, um, all of the metadata is going to be migrated into GitLab labels automatically for all existing, currently open, or future issues. And we're going to use that to try and you know, manage the same project component fields, the tags, all of these things will be labels. So that's going to mean that it'll be possible to say, oh, I want to see all uh, accessibility issues in the Drupal core queue that are tagged needs review, for example. And we can sort them for the first time into Kanban boards um, and make custom boards and dashboards for individual contrib projects versus core, give you a lot more organization, um, and perhaps do some planning, which is perhaps the most lacking side of the uh, issue management features we have today. So again, the Drupal bot um, that we've written is what's going to help you manage uh, the forks where you do this work and the merge requests that are associated to them. So when you create an issue, again, that bot will post another link um, that helps you manage this. And this is important because in GitLab and GitHub, by default, not everybody has access to contribute to a project. A maintainer typically has to grant you access, or you create a personal fork, hope someone accepts changes from that fork, and invite other people to contribute. So we're creating a UI, and we'll probably also create bot commands so you never have to leave the GitLab UI. Um, that assembles a list of the issue fork, all of the related merge requests, lets you just click a button to get access and contribute together. So when is this part going to be happening, the last domino in the chain? Well, everything you've seen here is working in a development environment. So 
Uh, we just have to finish some pieces to get it production ready, finish the new single sign-on solution for Drupal.org, deploy the Drupal 10 version of these features, migrate all the credit, and create the opt-in process to let you all use it on your projects. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. It's quite a milestone to be here now. So today is the day to try out the new CI system. Uh, next up is Leslie Glynn, and she will talk to us about Project Browser. Hi, I'm Leslie Glynn. The goal of the Project Browser is to make it easy to install modules from within your Drupal site that are compatible with your version of Drupal and to install those modules with a click of a button. Our target audience is site builders and those who are new to Drupal. So how do people currently search for modules? Well, they either go out to Drupal.org and they fill in this very overwhelming form um, or they go out to Google and do a search. But if they fill out this form, they return modules. Often they have very technical descriptions and what's returned is not um, consistent across the different modules and there's long technical descriptions that are hard to understand. So one thing everybody in this room can do for us today is just to try the project browser. So basically go to the project browser module page, click on the try it now button, that'll spin up a Drupal pod instance of Drupal 10 with the latest version of the project browser. Uh, you click on the top right to get a full screen, log in with admin admin and away you go. Um, so what you can do is give us feedback um, how easy is it for the interface to use? What can we improve? Uh, the information won't exactly what's match what's on Drupal.org, Drupal by the way, because we're still doing a manual sync, but eventually that'll be real time. Um, so anybody can help us with this today, whatever level you are, whatever you're interested in. Um, automatic updates initiative that Ted talked about, you no longer have to use Composer, which is exciting for everybody, uh, to install modules. You can click on the Add and Install button right from within the project browser. Uh, the messages will start with, um, you know, in process and they keep going. So another thing you can help us with today is to look at those messages that you get when you try to add a module from within project browser. Uh, there's a meta issue for proposing logos. This is somewhere designers can help out with. Um, it's the one place to go, go to the meta issues. There's a child issue for each one of the top 100 uh, modules. So you go and you just create create the logo. So what kind of logos do we need? Uh, we need square logos that are 512 by 512. They need to be PNGs. They should be 10K or less to load quickly. Um, so once the uh, issue goes from needs work to needs review and it's ready to be released, we'll create an issue in the module maintainers queue for them to actually go and implement these modules in Drupal.org. Um, so basically what the maintainer needs to do is to add a logo.png in the root folder um, of the contrib module in GitLab. And when that's where the, the logo will be pulled from for the project browser and for Drupal.org. Um, so you need to put it there. If you did put it as the first image uh, in your images on your project page, you need to remove it from the first image and put it in the code in, it's, uh, instead. Uh, there's a, so there's also a meta issue for the short descriptions. So one place to go to look at all the top 100 and find out what, what, what modules need descriptions, whether they need review or you need to write them. Anybody can do this. Anybody that, a site builder or somebody in documentation can create these short descriptions. What we're looking for is what does this module do in a non-technical way in 200 characters or less? So that's what we're trying to get. So this will be on the card view. Um, on the project browser, so it's a really short description of what it can do. But we want everybody, site builders new to Drupal, to be able to understand those. Um, so for maintainers, you'll be going to the project page and you'll be using the summary field off of the description field. That's where you'll be adding the 200 character descriptions, okay? And that's where the project browser will pull the descriptions from. Um, maintainers, so you'll, everybody who's a module maintainer, as, as we get through your modules, so we'll do this top 100 to begin with, you will receive two new issues in your issue queue, one for updating the logo and one for updating the short description. So if you can, if you get those in your issue queue, if you can help us by, you know, making those changes and completing those um, tickets, that would be great. Um, categories is the next big thing we're working on. We've been working really hard 
And right now there's 55 categories that the, the modules fall under. We cut that down to 19. Everybody in this room, we need your feedback in terms of are these 19 um, understandable? Do we need more? Do we miss anything? Because we're gonna be asking all the maintainers to recategorize. We'll be doing some of that automated, but to recategorize. So if everybody today could go to the bit.ly, uh, that's bit.ly, and then uh, PB category feedback for project browser category feedback, all one word. Just look at those, those titles of the categories and the descriptions and let us know, you know, are those, is that enough? That would be super helpful. We really need that before we can actually take the next step to implement these uh, categories. Um, the project detail page, right now we have a card that has the logo and short description. We're looking for the next page that has the longer description. Uh, we need help from everybody that, that would be using this to say what, what's the most important stuff to show on that next page. Yes, we'll still have a link out to Drupal.org for the issue queue, et cetera, but what information is really important for you to see on that page? We came up with a mark here, but we really need help from UX folks for the layout, from our target audience for what's important, so we need community feedback on, for that. Um, for front-end folks who are interested in helping us out, we have a whole list of different issues. Um, that you can work on. Chris will be in the general contribution room. Chris Wells, who's the other initiative lead, helping with these different uh, front end issues along with the other mentors. Uh, so find Chris. And there are also, the next slide will be a list of back end issues uh, that, you, that folks who are interested in that can work on today. Again, Chris in the general contribution room will be able to, uh, and other folks as well, will be able to help you through these back end issues. Um, so as you can see, there's something for everybody in this room that can help us out with Project Browser. Um, so why should you contribute? Well, Project Browser is new. Everybody's going to install Drupal. The next thing you're going to do is try to add functionality. So how cool would it be for you to contribute to this, this new initiative where everybody will be able to actually find and install modules from within their Drupal site? So go to the link. We have this link, uh, bit.ly again, PB contributions, all one word. We keep that up to date with all the things that you can contribute to on an ongoing basis. So after today, you go back, you want to contribute again, just go to that bit.ly link. Uh, there's a QR code you can scan here. Um, so how can you join our initiative after today? Again, we have Slack, we have meetings in Slack Tuesdays at 4 Eastern. We have a site builders, more non-technical meeting. Wednesdays at 10 a.m., Chris runs a general meeting where they discuss a lot more technical issues. You can. Um, you know, join us there, reach out to Chris or I today, um, and basically that's it, but you can all help us out, so thank you. Thank you, Leslie. Yeah, I really like this and the approach of this initiative because it's not only about building the software to find what, you, what, what kind of capabilities there in Drupal Contrib, but also to make the data itself better so that people can find those thousand flowers that bloom in Contrib, but may be hidden uh, from our view. So thank you. Uh, next and final speaker for today is Matteo, and his topic is maybe kind of a surprise to some of you. It's not been in a Dries note. It may not have been widely, uh, widely promoted, but it's in Drupal 10.1, and it is single directory components. Bon dia tots. As you may know, single directory components made it into Drupal core as an experimental module. Uh, what that means is that you can start using it today as long as you're using Drupal 10.1, which you are for sure. And just go to the module page and uh, enable it and just get started. But uh, before I get into things, I'd like to say that if you see Mike or myself today around the conference, uh, Feel free to stop us and tell us about your experience with components, if you're having a problem with your contribution ticket, or maybe if you want to help us run the sprint today, that would be nice as well. So why do we do all this? Uh, over the years, we have identified several challenges to theming that are specific to Drupal. Let's imagine that you want to theme a part of your site. You might start by writing a template and Ray that Drupal picks it up and prints hello world in the page and then you discover the variables that are available to it and maybe write some trick code that uses those variables, CSS, JavaScript, 
a library for those, then you attach the library in the page, and then when you think you're done, you need to find that preprocessed function that's changing all your data, and you need to alter it and maybe uh, remove it. So while all those or most of those are necessary evil when you're working with a powerful framework like Drupal, others can be mitigated by using components. And components are a given in the rest of the industry, but not for Drupal until now. And listen, you will still need to find your template and to do the pre-process dance, but we are improving the developer experience and also we are, uh, we are building components as we are making them a building block for theme compatibility. Uh, maybe you don't know this, but Classy uh, core theme was not able to adapt to the modern times because we couldn't change anything, a single HTML class. Everything was an API there. If we change it, we broke so many sites. Moving forward, what we want is that themes can provide, this is the list of my components, and anything in there may change at any time, but these are my inputs, and I vow to maintain compatibility with those inputs. So this is what a component looks like. It's just a directory inside of your components folder uh, that lives at the root of your modules and themes. And it contains Twig, JavaScript, it's, uh, CSS, and metadata. It can also contain documentation and a thumbnail. But those are the four important file types. And you already know Twig, CSS, and JavaScript. And the good news is that the metadata is actually not required. So you are today ready to write your first component. So go do that. When you're done, you need to find the template that you want to put the component that you defined and put it inside of uh, the page, right? Uh, to do that, you use Twigs include and embed, and instead of passing the path to the template, you pass the ID of the component, and then take uh, map the variables uh, that are available in the template to the component. Using a framework like this, uh, you can take a look at the designs and write a static HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for your component, identify the bits that change, and then put them maybe in your metadata and just include the component in the page. And while I said that the metadata is completely optional, we highly encourage that you define it because if you do, then other modules and themes will be able to learn about your component discover it, and do cool stuff with that, right? After all, components are just a building block for cool features. So we did all that, that's done. Uh, it's in Drupal core, as I said, and we are not stopping here. We, to complete our vision, we still need to do several things, and we need your help, of course. First thing that we wanna do is we want to dismantle the experimental module. We want to break it into pieces, small pieces, and sprinkle them all over Drupal core so there's no longer a module anymore, and it's just a thing that is there, like Form API or the routing system, right? And while we do that, we'll take all of your feedback and we'll improve SDC, we'll make it stable. And another thing that we wanna see happening is that we want you to start providing components in your modules, in your themes. We want components to become mainstream, boring, something that it feels like we've been doing forever. Because we believe that if we do that, it will bootstrap the innovation on these modules and themes that uh, will do cool things. And cool things, like for instance, turning components into a site building tool. Uh, imagine a site builder that goes into the manage display tab and goes into the field and select the component. I want the heading field to render with the heading component. Or go into the layout builder and drag a card into the page or the WYSIWYG. Another thing that we want to do is we want to turn components, the most enjoyable developer experience possible, to write UIs for Drupal. And for that, we'll leverage existing projects like Storybook and other component libraries that will provide you with hot reloading and all that cool stuff that JavaScript developers have been using for a long time. 
So we have several contribution topics. Uh, maybe you want to write your first component and then tell us how it went, how would you felt. Maybe you want to work on writing some of those cool modules or making SDCs table in Drupal core. But our main focus uh, today, I hope, is around documentation. Uh, we have researched other open source communities and we have seen, uh, for instance, React lower the barrier of entry for contributors and other developers using very good quick start guides. So we aim to get inspired by that and uh, write the best documentation. This is the tag that we've been using to mark some of the tickets that we have in Drupal.org that you can grab today. Go find one that interests you. If you don't see one, just create it and add the tag. And if you don't find that something that you want, just reach out to Mike or myself, and that's it for me. Ta-da. Thank you, everyone. So this would be normally time for questions, but we don't have time for questions. Um, so we'll not hold you up in this room, but we'll introduce you to the re rest of today, though, because this was a sampling of initiatives that are available to work on today. And these initiatives are already very amazing. But there's a lot more options today that you can be involved with. So who are you, our first time contributors, never contributed to Drupal? Raise your hands. All right. Thanks for being here. You're amazing. So today there are two 90-minute workshops that you can be attending. And the people there are wonderful volunteers and mentors will be there to teach you about Drupal.org and the issue queue and Slack and all of these tools that you use to contribute. And once you're aware of that, or if you are already aware of those things, then the next one is our mentored contribution room, where people will be there to help you go through the process of contribution. So once you already know the tools, then there's a dedicated area where people will be there to help you through the process of contribution, how to use the issue queue, how to find the issue, how, what to say there, that you reproduced it, et cetera, et cetera. And one slash if you are done with that as well, or if you know already the process, then next up is our general contribution room, which has all of these initiative teams that you've seen today and a lot more. Not only these initiatives, not only joke modules, but there's going to be people working on CK Editor 5. There's people going to be working on all kinds of things from Contrib, Search API, or Geo modules, or probably ChatGPT as well, let's be honest. So. There's going to be a lot of people working on all kinds of different things. So you're going to be there and find uh, the thing that you would want to work on there as well. So these are your three options. Uh, you can start with first time contribution if you are first time. You can start with mentored or you can go right away to the general contribution depending on your level of experience and your level of involvement. The way to get there is you go out from here and then you go up the escalators one way or the other and then everything is up from the escalators on the fourth floor. So there's the first time contributor workshop. Uh, th those are your two options for today. And then the other side of the building is the general contribution and the mentored contribution. So we would love to see you there today. And tomorrow are summits, but we will also be here tomorrow to work on some of these things. So if you are around tomorrow, uh, then you can also join us tomorrow at general contribution as well. So thanks for coming here now. Uh, enjoy your coffee break and then see you all day. <laughs>